Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, last week, I sent Alex this article. Alex put it up there somewhere. Uh, about voters rejecting the stadium taxes for the Kansas City Royals and the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. And Alex, for people that don't know, Alex don't know a damn thing about sports. So he was wondering, like, why the hell am I sending this sports article? Well, the reason why I'm sending him a sports article is not about the sport itself. It's about people waking up to realizing that these people that own these million and billion dollar franchises, sports franchises, they're getting richer off the back of everyday man. So what I mean by that is like when somebody gets a stadium, when somebody moves a stadium or builds a stadium, the owner of the, let's say the Chiefs here or the owners of the Kansas City Royals or the owners of any major sports franchise, they're not paying for 100% of the financing of that stadium. What usually happens is they pay a small percentage, like 25 to 30% of the cost to build it out. And then they work a deal with the local government. So the local government will increase the taxes on the citizens in that area to finance the other, the majority portion of the building. So I've seen this twice. Uh, this right here with the Chiefs article, the Chiefs and Kansas City Royals article that I sent you, Alex, and then with the Tampa Bay Rays here in Florida. Uh, remember that Tampa Bay's Ray Stadium that was in uh, St. Pete was supposed to move to Ebor. It's supposed to have been a, a new billion dollar stadium built in Ebor. But the people in Ebor voted against it because what was it going to do? It was going to raise up the property taxes in the area. Now, everybody, I mean, of course, it's diehard Chiefs fans, it's diehard Rays fans, but not everybody sit there and watch the sports. I mean, so Alex, if you're living in that community, you don't watch sports at all, but you will have to put the bill for that being there. And I know people are going to say, oh, well, it's going to bring up the value of your property. It's also going to bring up the taxes. It's also going to bring, I mean, ask the people there up, up there in uh, Dallas right now. Dallas with all the new stadiums and all the, you know, franchises and USFL teams and everything going on, their property value is rising, but they still need the place to live in. It's people that's on pensions, that's on fixed income, who paid off their houses, but the property taxes are so high there that they got to move because they can't afford the tax. And I'm glad that citizens are trying to wake up or starting to wake up to realizing that they're putting the bill for most of these corporations and most of these uh, businesses when they move in the area, even though they don't receive a direct benefit from it. I mean, me, I'm a sports fan. But I understand the economics of it. I rather, I rather look at my team from afar than have to sit here and look at my property taxes go up. In Kansas City here, they're talking about they're going to increase the sales tax again for the next 20, 30 years on all the citizens. All the citizens are not fans of the Chiefs. All Everybody is not, you know, you know, they're happy the team wins, but they don't sit there and indulge and consume. And then, so a stadium that the locals are paying for they still got to pay hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars to go into the stadium that they're paying for. And, they, the, the, and I'm just glad and happy that people are starting to wake up to the financial uh, aspect of it. Um, and it's a very, uh, it's a very refreshing thing, especially with this channel talking about finance all the time. Yeah, like you said, I mean, that's kind of happened in Tampa, too. There's, I mean, there's everything, all kinds of entertainment in Tampa and taxes are higher out there. Sales taxes are higher. Property taxes are higher everything right um yeah it's definitely understandable and um i mean you know i live more in a remote area um very right. much out here but uh but yeah i mean and we see that too it's with um i i saw someone point this out you know with states that don't have uh state tax income tax you know texas florida mm -hmm. i think the other ones but nevada um i think there's like a couple more but they have high property taxes because there is no supplemental income from the government um as far as you know taxes on state income tax and things of that sort and especially in texas with the property taxes out there it's that's ridiculous like you said yeah what, and they have a they have a higher sales tax also in those in those what regions what is the sales tax in texas like the tax uh the sales tax in texas let me look it up actually that's a good question Yeah, because in Florida, well, I mean, it varies by county, but I think in Hillsborough, it's eight and a half percent 
for the sales tax? Yeah, in, Florida, in Texas right now, 6.25%. Okay, for sales tax. Okay. There's some states that have high sales tax too, 10%. That's, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. that's into, it gets up there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's, and that's the, the key about it. And especially, and just thinking, going back to the Tampa, Ray, Tampa Bay Ray situation, a lot of those properties that's in that Ebor area, and it's in Hillsborough County, so I live in Hillsborough County, so I'll be affected somewhat by it. But a lot of those properties in the, in the Ebor area is people, you know, old timers, generational houses that people, families, you know, they lived in and now they kids and grandkids live in those same houses. So for the most part, a lot of them are paid off. And usually the person that's living there probably on fixed income, have a job or whatever. But when those taxes start climbing, 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 and then of course with the in, uh, insurance rate crisis here in Florida, then that cost goes up also. Then next thing you know, it's people, especially on fixed income, and a lot of people in Florida is on fixed income, either via if it's government aid, if it's social security, if it's pensions from jobs or whatever, or what have you, then that takes them out of the affordability matrix to do it. I mean, I believe that they said that with building that billion dollar stadium for the Rays and Ebor, it will it will bring economic values in the area to, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars a year just in the Ebor area. But the problem is, and I don't know how many sports fans out there, the Tampa Bay Rays can't even sell out their stadium in St. Pete when they're in the playoffs. So that's a lot of money going into building a, a stadium that the fan base is not that extreme, not that uh, ravaged, not that dedicated, and not that committed to doing so yeah it'll bring more traffic to the ebor area it'll bring more value to the properties but the economic the economic demand or the economic uh the economic demand i think will be there short lived because again the rays don't have that big uh, that huge of fan base and the other aspect of it is that the financial impact or the financial cost that is going to cost these homeowners and the people in the area is going to be going to be detrimental especially now you add in all the traffic problems that they're going to have you add in all this other stuff that they're going to have they they're really giving up their livelihood just for a stadium that's really not going to benefit them for the most part only thing it is is it's going to be a shiny new thing in a, a older part of town that really the owner the owners of the team is the one that's going to benefit from yeah absolutely yeah it's a it's definitely, I mean, you can definitely feel the impact. I mean, especially living in Florida, whenever they do, whenever there's a wave of, you know, migration or there's new construction, especially in Florida, there's construction everywhere. And it's just raising the cost of all the property taxes. And a lot of people are getting pushed aside, especially people living in Ebor. Like these aren't houses that are like nice houses. I mean, there's some areas, yeah, around the Tampa area that are nice. Yeah. For the most part, the majority of the homes in that Ebor area, um, around old Tampa, it, they're just like regular bungalow homes, wooden homes. They're and these they're pushing right. three, four hundred thousand dollars now just because of everything that's around it. And I mean right. bad condition homes too. Yeah, and then then you start hearing about the word gentrification going on. Then of course, with the higher cost and people can't afford the higher cost and they're moving out. Then they're moving out of the people tearing down the area and Ebor is a historic district, you know, then people want to tear down and bifurcate. And then now the people who's been living in Ebor all their lives for generations, they can't even afford to live in a place where they, where they grew up all their life because they've been priced out from a decision. And I'm glad that they voted against it, but they would have been moved out of their, their area where they grew up from a decision they made just for a stadium that they really don't have any benefit from. Right. that i mean said guys if you have any questions or comments let us know down below don't forget to share and like this video subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one